This video has been on my list for a long time, and I mean a long time. East Palestine, Ohio. I have watched this derailment slowly rise from big to bigger to biggest in the history books, and I've been waiting for the right moment to properly do my own take on the events leading up to the derailment. Now before I'm going to start this video, I'm not going to go over politics or anything of that nature. I believe heavily that that's just stupid and I only want to go into the technical terms behind why I think this derailment happened. I have also noticed a lot of misinformation about this derailment popping up too, as well as generic Mr. Beast clone YouTubers going to the site itself. But like, why? Anyways, without further ado, here's my summary on the East Palestine derailment and why I believe it happened. Now, it's important to know what PSR is before learning about this derailment, as it's what I believe was one of the key lead-ups to this derailment. Vice has a great documentary on what PSR is, and as well as why trains are derailing often, and I'll have it linked in the description for those who would like to see it. I personally suggest you watch the whole video after this one, because it's a very solid video. PSR, or Precision Scheduled Railroading, is the most god-awful and horrible thing the railroad could have done. It basically makes running trains more efficient, when in reality, it is a cost-cutting and endangering procedure for, you guessed it, profit. The image on screen is a perfect example of what PSR does to trains. You take two trains and combine it into one big massive train, and assigning one crew to it and laying off more qualified engineers to save money. This is already a horrible thing to do, but it gets even worse. Inspections on rail cars are rushed, any safety issues that could take time or delay a train are shrugged off and ignored. Sourced from the FRA, a rail car must go 3,500 miles without a safety inspection before they are to be inspected. But on an investigation conducted by Vice, they say it's common for rail cars to go 10 times that amount without being inspected. I could go on and on about more problems what the system has with employees and the general public, but I'll leave my own video for that. Now on to East Palestine and what we know currently happened. The derailment was caused by a hot box, or a hot bearing on a rail car. Now let me explain what these are. The wheels on rail cars, called truck sets, have what are called roller bearings on them. As the rail car rolls along, the bearings are lubricated, but in the event that one fails, the friction will cause the axle to heat up and catch on fire, then melting the rail car and causing it to break and derail a train. There are tools, however, to notify a train and crews in case this happens. There are wayside detectors called defect detectors along the tracks that are designed to detect trains and these specific issues and report it to the train crew or wayside desk. They monitor the train lengths, temperatures, and look for dragging equipment and a lot more. These are placed evenly throughout railroad routes to ensure that trains are safely monitored. Once the end of a train passes over the defect detector, it will broadcast its report over the radio. Here's an example of what one would sound like from a defect detector broadcast. NS32N had passed multiple wayside detectors before East Palestine, three exactly. The first detector read that the car that derailed first was measuring 38 degrees above ambient temperature. Then it passed the second one, which was 103 degrees above ambient, and finally, a third one, which was 253 degrees above ambient. At this point, they were warned by the detector to stop and inspect the rail car, and the engineer began to apply the brakes on the train and slow it down to a complete stop. But as he did, an emergency application was initiated, and the train came to a stop. As they got out of the cab, the crew observed fire and smoke behind them, and they notified emergency services and were given authority to apply the handbrakes on two rail cars at the end of the train and evacuate light from their now derailed train a mile away to a safe distance. That is all of the current factual and official information I can give about the derailment. I still do not know who is liable for the derailment, but this derailment has brought up many questions. What was the temperature set to to give an alert from the detectors? Was the railcar that derailed not maintained enough? All of this will hopefully be answered by the NTSB soon, and their investigation is still ongoing at the moment. I hope that with this video you can learn a couple things behind the scenes of railroading, and I hope this clears up a lot of the misinformation regarding this derailment. Thank you for watching, and if stuff like this interests you, consider subscribing and checking out some of my videos. I'll see you guys later.